rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And belated Happy New Year to all y'all. Happy New Year. <laughs> God bless. Hey, hey, this is a segue back into it, brother. If we can get brother uh, Addison to go ahead and read that slide because I think it was still segue into what we was talking about as far as beholding a glass. And I, you know, when we read that scripture, that kind of reminded me when you said earlier about getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror. <laughs> that that's what I was thinking about when uh, we read that scripture. Yeah, well, what what do you see in the morning? What image are you seeing? Uh, but but as a history, to me, is one of the, if you read the whole slide there, one of the things in the fact is that we're supposed to look at the example that was given to us to conform to that image and, 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 and the fruits that he wants us to bear. So go ahead and read that for us, uh, Brother Adams. Okay. <clears throat> Galatians 5, 22 to 26. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, <coughs> provoking one another, envying one another. First Timothy 4.12, that no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Hebrews 4.11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Uh -huh. First Peter 2.21 For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. And, and all that is, is uh, this is the fact is that he, he's given us from the gospel the images that we could we could follow, right? If we try to figure out what image is supposed to be, he was moving. What image is supposed to be? Right. And 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 so I was using this as another way. Is that how are you going to be a Christian? How do you, how are you going to manifest the kingdom of God around you and in you? He he given us example. He was moved back a past. He he went to that cross because of love, right? He, he didn't. He didn't go any other reason. Legit. He did yeah. it because of love. The question is, is if Mr. Was talking about people, God, go ahead. Love is always when, when you when you hear things like "For God to love the world." Yes, sir. That's always a kingdom move, ain't it? <laughs> you see, anytime you see any attributes of God at work, they are always at work according to His eternal purpose. Yes, sir. It is the love of God that is at work. To secure him a kingdom. Come on. And in order to get the kingdom, something gotta die. Something gotta be sacrificed. Yes. In order to redeem a man back. But yes. the motivation behind it That's is his love. Yes. But he would but he but but he's loving to get a kingdom. Yes. But I, I, I think one of the things that I've had problems with in the past is that my my description of love and my expectation of what love looks like didn't line up with God. And I think maybe sometimes we still fall in that category because I forget the part when it says that those he loves, he chastens. Uh -huh. That all chastening is not to condemnation, but it's actually unto repentance and salvation. Uh -huh. And a lot of times God has laid waste to Israel in order that he might res preserve Israel. Right. And I think we see that happening and says, if a man is not chastening his child, he hates him. Mm. You know, that's kind of that's deep, but, but it's also correct. Because if our nature are initially really corrupted to the point where it says the heart of deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, desperately wicked, yeah. there's an obvious need for a chastening or a correction to take place. Mm. So God is going to and does 
act in our lives to bring us to repentance and salvation. Yes. And that's a part of the law. Yes. Right. And, and you know, the funny thing about it is, I saw my wife give birth to my son. Uh -huh. And I remember my mom used to tell me stuff like, I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. <laughs> if you see a woman have a child, you kind of like want to give her them props. <laughs> you know, it's like, she went through all that to get you here. She yeah. might have, she, she might have a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? She, uh -huh. Yeah, you might want to give her the leeway in that end because I wouldn't have done it. Uh -huh. <laughs> she up, she in heaven or wherever you got to go. But Jesus Christ went through. Yeah, you better remember why she going through all that. Yeah, why she going through that? Yeah. I remember that portion too. <laughs> because in Genesis, he told her it's much pain. It is. It did. Pain. Yeah. But, yeah. But he did. The, the thing was, Jesus didn't do it. See, Jesus didn't have a reason aside from our sin to suffer the indignation and pain that he went through, the torment that he experienced was on our behalf. Wow. It, what I saw was that he has gone to the nth degree to save us. Mm. He'll take us now into that degree. Yes, sir. You know, so, so we are not being condemned wow. or judged in this age. And the judgment isn't yet. But we are being chastened that we might not come into condemnation or into judgment. Mm. Sometimes that doesn't look very pleasant. Mm. And it definitely doesn't feel good. Right. <laughs> right. It's, really, it's really hurtful. Gee. Gee. In Genesis.